holy cow here we are episode number 1000 the mr excel netcast i want to thank you for stopping by i want to send a shout out to my friends who were in toronto amber MacArthur, mike lazara leo laporte they were the ones who several years ago were the first people i knew in podcasting and said hey you should do a mr excel podcast and here we are never thought i'd hit episode number 1000 now I, i'm interested in anything weird happened today do we have any P1K problems, like the Y2K problems. Did the episode show up at the wrong side of iTunes or whichever uh, pod catcher you're using? Did it, it sort incorrectly or anything like that? If you have any weirdness, send me a print screen, bill at MrExcel.com just so we can see what's going on. All right, dueling podcast. Uh, Mike said, let's do a reverse lookup. Reverse lookup. So we have this schedule here and I want to figure out where, for example, truck one is and it might occur in more than one place. Now, Mike's going to do this with a formula. That formula makes my head spin. I have to tell you, I'm just going to flat out use VBA, fastest way to go, 10, 12 lines of code. We're going to have a function that will do this for us. Uh, so I'm going to come here to Visual Basic, insert a new module, and I'm going to create a function, not a sub. A function, I'm going to call it RL for reverse lookup. Two parameters are going to pass uh, the uh, value. So uh, let's call it uh, truck value as range, and then also where we're going to look. So the uh, lookup table as range and here we go okay so when I think about this they are going to specify they want to look for truck one within this range here so I want to grab the heading row and the heading column because that's what I need to report back the heading row and the heading column so I want to figure out that the head row H row is equal to lookup table dot rows I want the first row dot row minus one and then the heading column h call is equal to lookup table dot columns i want the first one dot column minus one that way i know where to look now the trick with a function is that you have to have a variable that is the same as the function name so that's going to be rl i'm going to initialize that to nothing we start out with nothing and then i say for each cell cell is another variable in lookup table if cell dot value is equal to truck value dot value, then I'm going to do something. And if next cell. All right. So now let's think about this, the part where I'm going to do something. Um, that variable RL is going to be equal to the old variable ampersand. And then we're going to add in cells. Uh, which row do I want? Well, I want the row. Hang on. Let's take a look at the data. I want to get the date first, so it's always going to be row number one. And which column do I want? I want cell dot column dot value ampersand in quotes a space another ampersand. And now I need to grab the time from column A, so that's going to be cells cell dot row and h call dot value. And then I'm going to join that with a semicolon and a space. That way we'll always have a semicolon between our various values. Now back here where I hard coded a one, that wasn't very good of me. I should have said H row. I already had a variable for that. Okay, so there we go. Let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of code. I think it's going to solve this. Let's do a quick test. We'll come back here and we're going to say equal RL for reverse lookup. Go look up truck number one within this range here. I'm going to make that be absolute. So we'll press F4, closing parentheses, and that truck is scheduled two places, 11.19 at 8 a.m. There it is. And 11.21 at 9 a.m. There it is. Perfect. Let's copy this down. And you see that it works perfectly. So quick little uh, custom function. Switch over to VBA, do a user-defined function. We're good to go. All right, let's throw this over to Mike, see what Mike comes up with. Hey, thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, but we got to go back to last week, podcast 995. You gave me the point, but really, I got that trick from the Mr. Excel message board. So the message board gets the point. Not only that, but this week, I've posted multiple times over the last year to the message board about reverse lookup and got help from people like Aladdin and Dominique. All right. Uh, row header column header i'm gonna to have to do two different formulas and then concatenate them together over here to get a time and a date i have the trucks listed here and i've done a count if 
counting how many trucks there are here, which will help us in our formula. Let's do our row header formula first. Now I'm going to start off with equals if. And we need some way to run the index formula to look up the header and footer when we have uh, looked up less than 2. But once we exceed and get to 3, we need a blank. So we're going to do a true false. We'll use a columns with an S. And we'll say columns from this cell right here. Dollar sign in front of the B8 colon B8. That'll increment a number as we copy it this way. And that'll be less than or equal to this. Again, lock it in front of the column reference. That way, this way, we get uh, the 2. And later, we'll get the truck. But when we go down, we'll get the next row information. If that's true, then we're going to use index to look up the time. Here's the time. F4, comma, and now our row. That's This is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. Well, row, uh, we need 1, 2, 3, or 4, depending on what truck we see here. So we'll use match. Match, and we're going to uh, look up. The uh, lookup value is going to be this truck value right here. And lock it in front of the column, comma, lookup array. Now, we have duplicates. There's a 9 there and a 9 there, a 1 there and a 1 there. So we can't just look up the whole value. We're going to actually have to extract from the whole table of trucks columns one at a time to match with the date as the column header. So watch this. The index function, again, is great for extracting columns of data. So we use index. The array is going to be the entire range here, F4. Comma, and the trick for extracting just a column of numbers from a larger table is to put a 0 right here. Comma, later we'll do it, uh, or you could easily do it for column, but put a 0 there, and it would extract a row. So we have a 0 for the row. Now we need to get the column. And we need either a 1, 2, or 3. We are going to use the small function, small function. And inside of that, we're going to use an if. Because we have to ask, hey, all of these right here, F4, are there any of those equal to our truck? Lock it in front of the column. If that's true, um, if that comes out true, then we want a column number for us. So we're going to do column. And here are the columns. But this will be 2, 3, 4. So from that, I have to subtract another column. Right now, we'd see b1 minus b1, which would be 2 minus 2 is 0, so we add 1. And the reason we do this strange construct here is this, if it's copied and pasted anywhere, this little construct will always give us the right column. Now, uh, we're in the middle of this if, in the middle of uh, small. All we need is the true for the if. We don't need the false, so close parentheses. Right now, this will give us an array, if I highlight all this, of columns. I hit uh, F9, 1 and 3, because there's a truck there and a truck there. Well, when we're dealing with this date here, we need uh, the 1. But when we get over to here, this date, we need the 3. I'm going to Control Z. That's why we're using the small. And here's how we use uh, get it as we copy across the columns. We use the same incrementing number, Control C, Control V. We close parentheses on the small. These screen tips really come in handy when you have a huge formula like this. We've got our column number. Remember, this index is just to get a, uh, a column of data for the, the match. So I close parentheses. That index right here, if you highlight it and hit F9, look at that. It did. It got, since there was a match for truck and we're with this date, we get uh, that column of uh, values. Control Z to undo it. We need, uh, so we've completed extracting a column of numbers for match, comma, and the match type. Since back here we're looking up a truck, we put 0, close parentheses. Now, we have just got our row number from our for our match right here. We do not need the column, so I'll close parentheses. That whole thing right there is our index, which is retrieving a particular time. We can see the screen tip says if. We just did our value, so value of true, comma. 
And then the value of false is going to be our double quote. That shows a blank when there's not a match. Close parentheses. This is an array formula, so we're going to hold Control and Shift and Enter. Copy it over and then down. And we should get for truck uh, 9 here a 10 a.m. and an 8 a.m. 10 a.m. and an 8 a.m. Now, uh, this video is already running uh, t t very long. So I have a similar formula for uh, the column. It's a little bit easier. It's not using the match. But uh, that formula we have for the column header. Now we need to grab both of these formulas and concatenate, concatenate them over here. Now watch this. I'm going to highlight this, scoop this out right here, and control C. And I'm going to show the clipboard. In 2007, that's how you do it. In, 2000 and, uh, in earlier versions, you control CC. Notice it's there, Escape, and then I come right here and scoop this out, Control-C. It's loaded it up. There's the column header. There's the row, Escape. Come on over here. There is going to be a problem if we concatenate these two formulas, because this is format right here, and formulas don't see format. So we're going to, right here, do equals text. And then we'll just paste. This is our row header, our time. So inside of the text, which will convert a number to f and format it and create text, so we'll put comma and in double quotes, we'll put hour, hour, colon, minute, minute, space, A slash P. Oops, I got a, a question mark, slash P. End double quote, close parentheses. Now, we also are going to need to concatenate this, so I'm going to ampersand. And instead of just uh, ampersanding, I'm going to use character 10, which will give me a hard return. So the, the date will jump down to the next line. And then another text. We'll paste this big, huge formula right here, comma, and then we'll use in double quotes the custom number format for month, slash, day, slash, year. And double quote, close parentheses. I got my fingers crossed. Control, Shift, Enter. Now we do need word wrap, boop, right there, just uh, because the hard return, the character, will send it down to the next line. But we need word wrap to show it in the cells. Double click and send it down. Highlight all these rows. And let's see, do we get uh, down here for truck 9? We have 10 AM on the 19th, 8 AM on the 21st. All right, uh, that's a point for Mr. Excel, because that VBA, much faster than that gigantic, ridiculous formula. All right, see you next trick. Hey, Mike, that was really, really cool. Now, I'm not sure I ever have to do a reverse lookup, but a couple of things I learned in watching your tip. First of all, I never realized that you can put a zero as one of the arguments in index and have it return an entire array, either a column or a row. Very, very cool. Also, I loved your, your trick with the clipboard. That Showing that clipboard so that way you could paste one piece of the formula into the text function and then the other piece of the formula into the text function what a great trick right there, the little dialogue launcher in the bottom of the clipboard group. Uh, love that one. Hey, thanks, Mike, and thanks to you for watching. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.